Nobody wants to deal with the discriminant, but unfortunately we can't avoid it anymore. Um, you know that it might be a discriminant question when they're talking about the number of solutions and it's a quadratic. So here's one from October 2020. Um, here's another one from April 2019 where they're asking for one solution. And here's another one from March of 2021 where they're also asking for one solution. With a little bit of background, I think you can solve these very fast. We're going to talk about the concept for a minute, and then I'll go back and solve those questions. So here I've rewritten the quadratic formula. Uh, the a, b, and c just refer to constants from a quadratic equation that's written in standard form. And this part under the square root, the b squared minus 4ac part, that is the discriminant. Okay, so I've just rewritten the quadratic formula. Um, and instead of putting everything over 2a, I've split it up into two parts. Now you might recognize this part right here. This is always the x-coordinate of the vertex. And this part over here is maybe less familiar, but it's the distance that you would travel from the x-coordinate in order to reach a root. I'm going to give you a few examples here. There are basically three possible scenarios. One is that you've got a parabola like this. And here's our x-coordinate right here, the vertex. And you can see you could travel the same distance left or right before you would reach a root. And so in that case, our discriminant has to be some positive number. We don't really care what it is, we just care that it's positive. And if it is a positive number, then there are going to be two roots. Another potential situation is this, where actually your vertex is sitting right on the x-axis, so there is no distance you can travel to get to the root. You're already there. That means that our discriminant has to be zero, and we're going to have one root. And now there's one more situation, and that's one like this, where actually there is no distance you can travel. You will never reach any roots. And so that means that the discriminant must be negative. You're taking the square root of a negative number which is imaginary, and in that case there are zero roots. So now let's go back and look at those questions again. So here we've got a quadratic equation. They're asking for one solution. That means we're going to have to use a discriminant, and the discriminant is going to have to equal zero. There's one solution. So we're going to say b squared minus 4ac equals zero. Our b is b. Our a is 4. That's 4 times 4. Our c is 9, and that all equals 0. Um, so that's b squared minus 144 equals 0. b squared equals 144. That means b is plus or minus 12, and 12 is the only option there. Here's another one. Again, quadratic, talking about the number of solutions. This time there are no real solutions, so we want our discriminant to be negative. So b squared minus 4ac has to be less than 0. Our b is b, so it's just b squared minus 4. Our a is 3. Our c is 5. That's got to be less than 0. b squared minus 4 times 3 times 5 is 60. So b squared has to be less than 60. Let's do one more example. It's a quadratic. They're asking about one solution. So we want our discriminant to equal zero. So b squared minus 4ac equals zero again. Our b is b. Our a is one this time. And our c is 16. Four times 16 is 64. So b squared minus 64 equals zero. b squared equals 64. And remember, it's got to be plus or minus eight, so it's d. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. And if you need more practice on the most common SAT math problem types, check out mathchops.com.